say Dorothy? Hello, everyone. I am Dorothy Davis. I'm a Parents Care and Share Support Group co Coordinator from Bright Point in uh, Illinois. And I am Earl Klotman, the Program Manager for the Advancing Fathers Program at Bright Point in Illinois. So I want to thank you for joining us, our broadcast today. Uh, creating your own fatherhood blueprint with coach Mike D to talk to us today about fatherhood. He's highly qualified to speak about fatherhood and he's combining his knowledge, skills, and gifts as a peak performance coach. Today's topic is so very important. We wouldn't consider constructing a building without first consulting with and hiring an architect to draw, draw up a blueprint for us. Illinois 53 South Exit toward Chicago West Suburbs. If we could have everyone mute themselves, please. We're getting some interference. So as I mentioned, today's uh, topic is so important. You know, we need to have a blueprint, but sometimes uh, dads may not have been taught a solid framework for fathering or they may not have had a strong father figure or perhaps a mentor to learn from. So that's why this conversation about your own fatherhood blueprint is so essential. So we're gonna talk about Coach Mike D and what he does. He is a personal development and peak performance coach who lives in Knoxville, Tennessee, my, my grandparents' stomping ground. Um, he is the author of three books, A, B, E, Always Be Engaged, Dynamic Fatherhood Manifesto, whoo, and The 33 oh Laws the of right Impact to and Fulfillment. Right he also developed Jumpstart Fatherhood Program. He's also known for the podcast Impact and Fulfillment with Coach Mike D., where he addresses fatherhood issues, as well as gems of wisdom that he's gleaned by interviewing uh, insightful leaders all across the world. So we're gonna have Coach Mike D to jump in and start talking about fatherhood. Mm. Thank y'all so very much for this opportunity. Um, I want to thank Bright Point. Um, definitely, I want to thank for the introduction with Dor Dor Dorothy and Earl. And just, I just want to thank y'all for the opportunity to come and share. Um, long story short, there's an importance in creating your own fatherhood blueprint. There's an importance associated with it. And, you know, I think before we get into the importance of creating your own, you have to first understand, like, what is a blueprint, right? And, and I'm a sports guy. So I'm always, you know, a big football fan and I don't, you know, I'm not going to call out different teams because we might have different allegiances in here. Right. But the reality is every good football team, especially on the offensive side, but also on the defensive side, they have a playbook. Right. And when you think about a blueprint, a blueprint in essence is a playbook. And it's extremely important for you to curate and create your own fatherhood blueprint. But the thing is, this thing needs to be aligned with your values and how you live your life. We all approach life from different angles, right? And the thing is, the beauty of living where we live is that we have the capacity or the ability to live a life that's in alignment with who we are from a value perspective, right? I heard a quote a long time ago, and it's been something that's really resonated with me, and it said, to not value your schedule, but to schedule your values. And that's been something for me that's been extremely important because a lot of times we get caught up in our schedules, but the reality is we need to schedule our values and creating your own fatherhood blueprint in essence becomes an opportunity for you to schedule your values, schedule how you commit to living your life. And that word commit is gonna come back up as we talk a little bit about you know, the book that I created, um, the Dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto, and the 10 commitments necessary for excellence in fatherhood. So again, blueprint, playbook, think about it through the lens of sports. You need something to help guide how you operate. But the thing that's interesting about that 
even before constructing the blueprint or creating a playbook, you have to start with the will. You have to start with the will to want to become a better man. And if you become a better man, one of the defaults or one of the byproducts of becoming a better man is you become a better father. You become a better partner or husband to your spouse. You become a better you know, leader. You become a better person. But the thing is, that starts with the will, right? Where there's a will, there's a way. And, and it's so interesting. A lot of times, success does not happen in various capacities in life because we really do not have the will for that success to happen. And, and when you think about will, you think about the energy that you bring to a situation, right? If I bring the energy to a situation in which, yo, I'm going to accomplish this goal, I'm going to accomplish this task, you know, I'm going to figure out a way to make it happen. Whether I have a playbook or not, I'm going to figure this thing out. That starts with our will. And so if you're in this room and you are a father, or you're in this room and you're in this presentation and you're called to support fathers and those that are leading families, it's all about helping individuals to really understand the will that's necessary to do so. Because where there's a will, there's a way, even if you don't have all the tools in place. And, and it's interesting, you know, talking about the concept of really not having the tools in place, because there are a lot of us as dads, um, then maybe didn't grow up with the best examples at home, right? Like, I mean, that's that that's a reality. And and unfortunately, that's becoming more and more the reality, you know, as you know, as time moves on, you see less and less examples that serve as the guidepost or that help you to construct the playbook of what to do in life. Like, and that's a reality, you know. I mean, there are some of us that, you know, want to get in better shape, right? And but we maybe live in an environment or have a family that maybe never prioritized health. So you don't have a you don't have a playbook there. You know, maybe I want to or maybe some of us want to improve our financial situation. But maybe we grew up in a household with bad money management habits. Right. We don't have a playbook of what to do. Right. But going back to this concept of where there's a will, there's a way. That will is the energy to get started. And the way is using what you have available. So what we tend to forget at times is the value of bad examples. Because if we take a step back and really think about it, we might not have a playbook of what to do, but we darn sure have a playbook of what not to do. Think about that. We might not have a playbook of what to do, but I'll almost guarantee you if you don't have that playbook, you have a playbook of what not to do. It's an interesting perspective because a lot of times, like with kids, like when I speak to schools and all, we talk talk to kids and we ask a, a young kid in elementary school what they want to be when they grow up, you know, that's all theory, right? Because they really don't know what they want to be because they've not been exposed to everything yet. But if you ask them what they don't like, where they don't want to go, right, they can tell you that definitively. Right. And so that's why there's a benefit in not always the, the right side of the coin, but there's a benefit in the wrong side of the coin, because that's definitive. You know where you don't want to go. If you want to get in better health, you know what you should not eat. Now, whether we do it or not, that's a different conversation. <laughs> you know, if we want to build wealth, we know what not to do. Hey, we need to not spend more than we have coming in. We know what not to do. Again, whether we have the discipline to follow it or not, different conversation. So for some of us that maybe grew up in a situation in which we didn't have a proper example at home, again, where there's a will, there's a way. Start with what you have. Start with the examples that I don't want to follow. Again, a pre and, and this is interesting. When you think about the concept of a principle, a principle has to be true across the board. So if one side of the principle is true, that means the opposite side of the principle has to be true. Meaning if saving our money and investing our money and spending less that we make builds wealth, that means spending more that we have and, you know, not saving our money and wasting it does the opposite, right? A principle has to be true. So therefore, don't eliminate the fact that you have value sitting in front of you in what not to do. And this actually leads me to um, 
what inspired me to create the dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto. And so, again, with principles, principles are applicable everywhere. So the title, Dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto, that came when I was in the midst of doing a podcast that was entitled Black Fathers Now. So I created basically a partner guide for that. But the principles in the Dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto are not explicit to Black men. They are explicit to all men looking to become better and to improve themselves, right? But the inspiration for the Dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto came, and I can give you the date that it came. It came on February the 21st of 2018. So I was at home and I was playing on my computer. Well, not playing. I was creating something on my computer and the TV was on in the background. And that was the day that Billy Graham died. So on TV, all the bullets that were floating around on the television, everything that was scrolling across the screen was all about Billy Graham, Billy Graham, Billy Graham. And I happened to look up and at the bottom of the screen, I saw this thing go across um, the bottom that said the Modesto Manifesto. And I was like, what is this, the Modesto Manifesto? I was on my computer, so I immediately looked it up and it was fascinating. In 1948, when Billy Graham started to rise into prominence as a, as a preacher around the world, he identified three things that were the downfall of leaders throughout history, sex, power, and money. So he identified that these were the three components that led to the downfall of most leaders throughout history. So in 1948, he and some of his um, advisory team and, and friends, some of the uh, other ministers with him, they went to a hotel in Modesto, California, and they created loosely this thing that was called the Modesto Manifesto. And it was, this was a pact that they came together to hold each other accountable against the things that have led to the downfall of leaders in the past, sex, money, and power. And so this was something that helped to serve as a guidepost or a blueprint for his life. He had all of these contingencies in how he operated to guard himself against issues with sex, power, and money as he rose to prominence. So as I was sitting there and I came across this thing that I had never seen before, and I personally thought it was something divine that this came across my screen at this particular moment, I thought to myself, where is the manifesto for fathers? Where is the manifesto for me specifically at the time for Black fathers, but this is applicable to all fathers? Where is this guidepost? Where are these principles in place to help hold fathers accountable to not become or fall victim to the issues that have plagued men throughout history. And so I thought about it and immediately I was like, man, you know what, I'm gonna create this manifesto. And so over time, after doing hundreds of interviews with leaders from all over the world, I constructed these 10 principles, these 10 commitments necessary for excellence in fatherhood. And that's what ultimately became the Dynamic Black Fatherhood Manifesto. And I mentioned earlier the, the term commitment. And if you look at, and I'm gonna go through the 10 points here, this just as a framework for you to maybe get some ideas to create your own manifesto, your own fatherhood blueprint that's in alignment with your values. But at the beginning of the book, you'll see that each chapter starts with, I am committed to, and that is the chapter. I am committed to that thing. And at the end of the book, there's a contract that you sign, right? And this is also for those that are in support of the fathers, because if you flip the page at the end, there's also a contract for those that are in support of men. Specifically with this one, it was black men, but these principles are applicable across the board, okay? And so let's dive into the 10 commitments necessary for excellence in fatherhood. So the first one, is I'm committed to optimizing my finances. So for me, that was something that was always important because we live in a society in which money is necessary, right? It's necessary to survive. And if you look at, and I'm married with, with two kids, when you look at one of the top reasons for divorce, it's typically money issues and money fights. And so for me, 
as a father, I am committed to optimizing my finances because I know that's something that helps to alleviate a lot of other issues in life or a lot of issues in the family. The second one, I'm committed to continuously nurturing my interpersonal relationships. You know, I'm not a stuff person. You know, my wife's a little bit more of a stuff person than I am. I'm not a stuff person. I love experiences and I love people. I love deep, intimate relationships with people and I love experiences, but I am committed to nurturing my interpersonal relationships because from a value proposition, that's extremely important to me. That's extremely important to me with regard to growing and developing, but then also helping to build an ecosystem around my family. You know, there's an African proverb that states it takes a whole village to raise a child. It doesn't just take a village, it takes a whole village. That means we need to connect with a lot of different pieces and parts. And as fathers, even if you have mom and dad in the house and you have a nuclear family, it's still hard to raise children by yourself. You need a whole village. And so by continuously nurturing and building my interpersonal relationships, that's something that I personally value and I'm committed to. Next, I'm committed to developing effective communication skills. So as a speaker and as a coach and, you know, when I host different things and do some acting, et cetera, the thing that's interesting, communication is extremely important. Now, effective communication doesn't mean that you're the best speaker, right? Because you communicate in a lot of different ways. Communication is you have the ability to effectively get your point across. So whether that means you have the best vocabulary or you just understand how to talk to certain people in certain situations, right? That's effective communication. The result of effective communication is the person or the group that you're communicating to, they understand exactly what it is you were trying to communicate. So you have some individuals who speak very well, but are not great communicators because they're talking over the head of whoever it is they're talking to. So for me, I'm committed to developing and honing in on effective communication skills. Again, I'm running through this as a framework so that maybe this will give you some ideas in creating your own um, fatherhood blueprint, things that are in alignment with your values. Next, I'm committed to confidently believing in myself. You know, it's interesting. Um, a lot of people struggle with confidence, right? A lot of us struggle with confidence. Um, maybe it's because we've made mistakes in life. And guess what? All of us have. Maybe it's because we've had some big failures. And guess what? All of us have. You know, one of, and this is a sidebar, one of the beauties of having interviewed individuals who have had significant success and being connected with people in various positions, once the cameras go off and once you sit down with them, you come to realize that, man, they're just like me. They might have another comma in their, uh, their bank account. They might have a few more million followers or they might be adored by, you know, legions of fans all over the world. But the reality is they're just like me. They still they have issues and challenges and all just like I do. They've had failures just like I've had, right? They might be on a different plateau at this particular moment, but we're all people. And so that gives me confidence that I am enough, right? I mean, from a spiritual perspective, I believe I'm enough, but I know we all have different beliefs, you know, across the board. But the reality is confidently or learning to confidently believe in yourself helps you to understand that I can do this. This goes back to the will. Sometimes people don't have the will and we don't execute because we don't believe that we're capable. Remember, there have been many that have come before you. You're no better and no worse than any of them. All right, we have to remember that. So I'm committed to confidently believing in myself. I'm committed to continuous mental, physical, and emotional development, meaning I want to stay in great physical shape, right? I want to stay in great mental health. I want to stay in great emotional health. I want to spiritually grow and develop. I want to become the best version of who I am. I'm committed to working at becoming the best version of who I am, right? Now, am I that now? No, I'm a work in progress. My ultimate goal is to continuously work at that. But I'm committed to continuous mental, physical, and emotional development. I'm also committed to traveling and exposing my family to different ideas, 
and experience it. You know, the thing is, exposure leads to expansion. Exposure leads to expansion. A lot of times you don't know what you don't know. Now, travel does not mean you have to take a $50,000 trip around the world. You can travel to a park on the other side of the city that you've never been to. It opens your mind to something different. It's a different environment. You're able to see different things. You can go to a, a restaurant and try a different cuisine that you've never had before. The different spices, the different people, the different smells, it opens your eyes, opens your mind up to different things. Again, exposure leads to expansion. And for me, it's extremely important to expose my children, to expose my wife to different things. And so for us, travel is extremely important. I'm committed to traveling. Again, these are just components that maybe you can pull from to construct your own fatherhood blueprint. I'm committed to giving my resources, my time and expertise to others, right? I think giving is extremely important, right? Giving is extremely important. Um, no matter how little or how much you have, you have the capacity to give in something, right? So you might not have the ability to write big checks, but maybe I can spend some time with someone. Right. I might not have the time to spend with someone. So maybe I can shoot them an encouraging message or maybe I don't have time or the experience or whatever to do that. But you know what? I can pick the phone up and call a recommendation on behalf of someone that I know is looking for an opportunity. Right. Either way, there is an opportunity for us to always be giving and to find joy in doing so. I'm committed to giving my resources, time and expertise to others. I'm committed to being truthful and living with integrity. Um, that's something that we have to be mindful of, especially, you know, we live in a culture of, you know, snitches get stitches and, and all of that. It's, and it's interesting, but the reality is we have to be truthful and live with integrity because as fathers, we have eyes watching us. And what I've learned with my 10-year-old and my 12-year-old is they might not always do what I tell them to do, but if I pay attention and watch, oh, they're repeating and doing what they see me do, right? So that's why I have to carry myself with integrity and I have to be truthful. And because, you know, when they were like young, you can kind of tell stories, you know, you can make some stuff up. They're 10 and 12 now. If I do something that don't make sense, oh, they don't ask me about it. <laughs> they're like, so dad, you said this, but you did that. I'm like, ooh, ooh, touche. <laughs> okay, I got I to gotta back that one up. And it's interesting, but it holds me accountable. Right. I have to be truthful and live with integrity for myself, one, but two, because I got eyes watching. I'm committed to embracing the changes in life. You know, the one constant in life is change. Things are going to happen. We are going to change. Um, you know, you're going to get older. You know, stuff might start hurting that didn't used to hurt. Um, you know, you have different scenarios, different dynamics. Life happens, right? Changes are going to happen in life. If you think life is going to stay constant, you've mistaken yourself, right? I mean, just if you even think about it to this point, the earth rotates right now, right? The earth completely rotates 24 hours in a day. Like it fully revolves. I, I forgot the uh, speed. I, I think it's how many thousand miles per hour we're rotating, but we're rotating right now. And we're revolving around the sun at a speed that's like 93,000 miles an hour, something crazy. So even if you feel like you're sitting still and constant, you're moving, right? Movement happens, changes happen. I'm committed to embracing the changes in life. You know, I know we have nostalgia about the good old days at times, right? You know, for me, music in the 90s, that was like my era of music that I thought was like the best. I know we all can debate on that. But the thing is, the 90s to me was my era of music that I just really enjoyed. But the thing is, I cannot look at today's music and say that it's bad because I'm comparing it to the 90s. It's just different. Things change. Taste change. I'm committed to embracing those changes in life. And that's what's bothers it. I'm embracing the changes that happen with my wife. I'm embracing the changes that happen with my children as they grow. I'm also embracing the changes that happen within me, right? We have to give ourselves grace in that. And then lastly, the last one of the 10 commitments necessary to effective fatherhood found in the dynamic Black like Fatherhood Manifesto, I'm committed to spending time getting to know myself, my history, my family, you know, 
a lot of times people don't fit in who they are enough, right? There's stories and solutions embedded in you. And sometimes it just requires you to sit and just kind of reflect on some of the experiences you've had in life. Sometimes it requires you to have conversations with parents if you're blessed to have your parents still alive, maybe even grandparents, you know, have conversations with cousins, with relatives, people who grew up and knew this person at this stage of life, because that gives you insight into who you are. It's so interesting, the older that I become, the more I see components of myself in my parents. But some of that comes from having conversations with them, but then also getting feedback from some of their friends and some other relatives about, man, when your dad was your age, he used to do some of the same stuff you were doing. It's like, wow, this is interesting because it helps to give you framework and understanding more so of who you are. And so these commitments that I listed are not intended for you to say, I'm going to copy and paste and adopt these 10 commitments. It's about giving you some inspiration, um, finding things that are of value to you and creating your own fatherhood playbook. Again, if you're if you have the will, if you're resourceful, if you're committed, you will find solutions. And if, even if you don't have proper examples, use the negative examples of what not to do. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. Um, one of my favorite books is a book called The Alchemist. And there is a concept in The Alchemist that states, if you pursue your personal legend, the universe conspires to help you along on your journey. And for me, that quote resonates so well because it highlights the fact that you have to start pursuing before you start to get the help to help you on your journey. So as you think about the construction of your own fatherhood playbook, it's important for you to develop the will, find the will to get started and just start. Because even if you don't have every- I missed season, half my training. Hello? Hello? Yeah. And so as we continue to grow and develop and as we find the, um, the will to commit to building our own fatherhood playbook, and as we start walking that path, we ultimately get the help that we need, but it requires you to first start. So, you know, the world needs the best version of you as a father. The world needs the best version of you. Your families need the best version of you. Your kids need the best version of you. You know what? I'll take it a step further. You should not subject anybody to dealing with a lesser form of who you're capable of being. Because listen, we all suffer when the best version of you does not show up. So I hope this has been beneficial. Um, I'd love to have a little, you know, Q&A if anybody has any questions. And um, I thank you all for the opportunity to chat with you today. So I have a question.